If you guys need any FIFA 22 coins, make sure you check out IGVault.com. Their link is down in the description. They're fast, cheap, and reliable. And if you use code REMA, you can get yourself a nice 6% extra discount. So what's going on guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. In today's video guys we have a 4231 custom tactics and instructions video, something that I've seen requested quite a lot but I didn't want to make too soon just in case you know it was wrong and I didn't actually like it. So you know I've played with these tactics quite a lot, I've won a lot of games in rivals with them and uh, because I'm starting to see what works in FIFA 22 obviously you know there's still things we don't really know yet but as of right now I found this to be working just perfectly for me uh, especially with like long range finesse shots and crossing you know 4-2-3-1 really does help uh, but before we do get into that guys I would really appreciate it if you could drop this video a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, let's get right into it. Okay, guys, so these are not the tactics. Don't worry. The reason I haven't put them there straight away is because a lot of people will just, you know, click on this video, look at the tactics, copy them, and complain if they don't work. So I think it's better if you do understand them because then you know what the strengths of these tactics are and you can play a lot better with them because custom tactics are no magic formula you know you have to know how to use them uh, and they have to be right for you of course you know this is what works for me I found it to be extremely overpowered uh, with the uh, with how FIFA 22 gameplay is so you know you can try these out for yourselves and if they if they do help you out then uh, please let me know so the first thing that we need to talk about is the defensive style now the thing about the 4-2-3-1 narrow yet we're using the narrow variation uh, with the one with the three cams the reason you want this unbalanced is because the 4-2-3-1 as itself is a balanced formation which means you can press you can you can drop back or you can do a bit of both the 4 2 3 one's very good at that so the reason you want to keep it on balanced is because it allows you to defend with variety you know so sometimes you might want to lay off your opponent when they're running at you and catch them off guard sometimes you might want to press them and force them into a mistake by having it on balanced it, uh, it puts your team into a position where you can press or you can drop off you know it's very useful to have that on balance now Talking about the width, the width is basically, as you can probably expect, the width of the team. And the higher this is, the more spread out the team is. So if you see this, you can see the higher the width, the more your team spreads out across the pitch. I don't know if you can see that. And as I lower it back down, the more compact they become. So the thing with the 4-2-3-1 is, although it's a narrow formation, you don't want to get trapped into being too narrow because then it's very difficult to get out and your opponent can just bot. It, they can just box you in essentially uh, so what I suggest having this on is around 58 because if you look at the positions of the fullbacks they're just outside the corner uh, of the edge of the box so like they're not too wide they're not too narrow like you can see it'll be very difficult to play a ball in between them without your defenders catching them uh, and it'll be very difficult to play it around them so the reason I have it on 58 is because it's not too narrow uh, and it's got just enough width uh, to you know defend properly now moving on to depth this is how far your defensive line is up the pitch essentially uh, it's how far your team presses up when they don't have the ball uh, it's mainly to do with like midfield battle and things like that so if you if you look at this when we put the depth up to 100 look how far uh, the team is pressing up the pitch look how far they're sitting um, you don't want that obviously you don't want it that high because you can just get countered and it's very very easy to play a ball in behind there one through ball and you're probably screwed so what you want is because obviously defenders are not the quickest at this point in time you don't want them to be in a position where you know they're trapped in the box because you won't get out you like you won't get out every time you get the ball you'll kick it away and they'll be right back on you you'll be pinned back so you don't want it really low you also don't want it really high for the reasons we've just spoken about because, you know, it, it's very easy to play a ball in behind and get counterattacked and stuff like that. So what I suggest having this on is around 45 because you see how they just hang around the edge of the box, you know. They're not camped inside the box like this and they're not really far outside of the box like this. You know, you want them to be around this area because it's very difficult for your opponent to decide what to do. You know, if they play a through ball there, your defenders will either pick up the ball or your keeper will come out and get it 
Uh, and obviously if they try and pin you back, you're also not too far back, so it is easier to get out. So it's nice to have it on 45 depth because it gives you that nice balance. Uh, and you're going to hear that word a lot when we talk about the 4-2-3-1 because that's what it's good at balance now for build up play it's a bit like everything else really you want to have this on balance because again the 4231 offers such a variety in the way it performs so what i mean by this is you can keep possession because there's lots of players scattered around the pitch you can play a long ball because you have your striker up there as well as your cams or you can just play a through ball in behind the back line. So the reason you want build play to uh, be on balance is because it gives you a variety of what you can do. And obviously build up play is, you know, based on when you have the ball in your own half and things like that. Uh, and chance creation is for when you're in their half. But build up play, basically you want this to be on balance because you can either be very quick or you can be very slow and patient, or you can do a bit of both, you know? Having it on balance allows you to have that variety in your attack, and that is very important because if you just have it on slow build-up and you get pressed, you're in trouble. Because if a guy's good at pressing, you won't be able to get out and you'll just keep losing the ball in your own half, and you don't want that. If you have fast build-up and your opponent is patient and, and, and you're too fast for yourself even, you know, it's very predictable play. And when they start catching on to that, you'll keep losing the ball and you don't want on that uh, long ball as well it's very easy to defend if your opponent knows what they're doing and they can control their defenders very well so basically having it on balance it gives you the option of all of them uh, which is very useful with this formation so I suggest having that on balance guys now for chance creation I suggest direct passing now the reason for this is if you read the description it says once the team enters the attacking zone with possession players will create chances by making runs for passes into space behind the opposing backline strikers who are fast with a good attacking position and attribute are the best at this tactic now I know this seems very one way but the way that this works is extremely overpowered because when teams uh, play when teams like to play with a high line and things like that having this on direct passing because of the way your attacking players act uh, it kind of pushes them back a little bit and when you have it on direct passing your players get into these positions where it's very easy to just play a ball in they seem to have more movement than in any other options obviously you can have it on balance possession forward runs or whatever but the reason i like direct passing is because i feel like you have the most movement with it uh, if you look at the diagram in the bottom right corner you can see how much the players are moving around you can see how desperate they are to get in behind the defense that is what you want because you don't want to be stuck in a game where you're just knocking it around all the time and you're not really creating chances so this really does help uh, because it forces your opponent uh, into trying to get the ball off you otherwise they're in trouble because you just play a ball in behind them now moving on to width i like to have this on around 50 hmm, I, I like to have this on 60 i'd say uh, because you don't want to be as narrow as when you're defending but you also don't want to be too wide because like i said the 4231 is a very strange formation especially the narrow version because although it's called the 4231 narrow it's actually got good width as well so what I mean by this is when you're attacking, if you have this on about 60 width, you can't really tell if this formation is wide or narrow because you've got players covering the centre of the pitch and you've also got players covering the wings. So having this on 60 width allows you the option to play down the wings or play through the middle. And this is very important with how FIFA 22 is because I don't know how many of you played FIFA 19, but to me it feels very similar where if you play it down the wing, crosses are very good and headers are okay. Or if you play it through the middle and cut inside with the cams, the finesse shots are extremely good from outside the box. So by using 60 width, it gives you the option to go out wide or it gives you the option to come narrow so it's very very useful and unpredictable so you can switch up your play whenever you like now for players in the box I'm sure this one's pretty self-explanatory with what it does it determines how many players dart into the box uh, when you're making a cross or a pass uh, so you can see as you up it like this more and more players pile into the box you don't want this too high because as you can imagine if you have all of your players in the box and your player doesn't win the header you're, you're, you're very you're very susceptible to a counter attack and that is not what you want so what you want is to have this on around about six or seven I'd say 
The reason I like to have this on six is because you've got two players hanging outside of the box, if you see that. Whereas if you have it on seven, you've only got one player right there. So if they win the ball back, if you have six, like if you have this on six and they win the ball back, you've got two players there to cover when the ball comes back outside the box. So it's harder for your opponent to counterattack you right from a corner or a crossing play. Uh, so that's why I have that on six. Now for corners, again, this determines how many players get into the box from a corner. Again, you can probably predict that. Uh, and if you have this very high, they all go into the box. You don't really want that. Uh, so I like to have this on three because you can see, you, again, you have two players hanging outside of the box. You've basically got two lines of defense there uh, to stop the counter attack. So you do want that because you've still got attacking players in the box, but you also have some players ready to uh, you know, defend the counter attack if there is one. I suggest the same with free kicks because again you want some players in the box and as you can see if you have this on two there's not really anyone at the far post uh, but if you have this at three there is someone at the far post and there's still players defending so that is ideal I think I suggest you guys use that. Now that is the tactics section of the video let's move on to the instructions. So for the striker guys I like to just leave him alone because like I said the 4-2-3-1 is a formation of balance. Sometimes you want them to run in behind, sometimes you want them to wait for the ball and sometimes you want them to just move around uh, and make passing options. So I like to have this on you know balanced, normal, whatever you call it because it gives you that variety. Sometimes they'll make a run, uh, sometimes they won't and it's very unpredictable. So I do like to have that on balanced uh, so your opponent can't get too used to you if you get what I'm saying. Now for the central cam, I like to have this player on stay forward. Now the reason for this is when you're playing with a 4-2-3-1 uh, and somebody is attacking you, when you get the ball back, it can be very difficult to get the ball up to your attackers because the 4-2-3-1 has a problem sometimes where it can be too compact and too far back. So by having this central cam on stay forward, you have two players, your striker and your cam. And you can basically get the ball up to your cam because there's not that much of a distance between the cam and and the center backs uh, like but there is a massive distance between the center backs and the striker so what I'm saying is you can pass this from your defenders to your cam and then to your striker and then your whole team will push up the pitch so I find that very useful other than that I leave the cam alone the outside cams I just again leave them alone because I like to have them balanced sometimes they'll drift out wide and sometimes they'll come inside to shoot so it's very useful because again it is unpredictable if you change too many of these settings where they're only doing one thing it becomes predictable easy to defend and there's not much movement from your attackers believe me so just leave your two outside cams alone and obviously you don't want them to stay forward because if you look at the 4-2-3-1 as a formation you've got these four defenders here the two CDMs and then your next line of defense is technically these two cams these two cams kind of make it like a 4-4-1-1 at times because when you're defending these two cams will come out and defend they will fill in the gaps on the wing so it's very difficult for your opponent to get through because there's no space so having these as uh, having these on basic defensive support is very useful because it believe me it's very effective uh, in your defensive play now for your two central defensive mids, I suggest having them on cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking and cover center. The reason for this is if you've got these cams defending from wide, you want these two to stay in the middle because you don't need these drifting off wide. If these players drift off wide, you've basically got a massive gap in the middle of the pitch and you don't want that. If you've got these two covering the width uh, the wing play sorry and you've also got these fullbacks you want these two in the middle to block all of the passes through the middle because one of the most effective ways of scoring in FIFA has always been down the middle and like I've said the shots from outside the box are extremely overpowered this year so you want these two to act like uh, a little protective line in front of these uh, defenders uh, and obviously in, in combination with these uh, wide attacking players it acts like two banks of four so you've got a very effective defense and obviously you want them to stay back while attacking because if they bomb it forward up the pitch when you get hit on the counter attack all six of these players all six of these players sorry the two cdms the three cams and the striker will be up the pitch and when you lose the ball all you will have is these four players here and you don't want that so you want these two cdms to be on stay back while attacking cover uh, cut passing lanes and cover the center because it's very very effective this year 
Now, the last thing I want you guys to change is your fullbacks. I know it's very tempting to have these on join the attack, but it's not necessary with this formation because you've already got the width, right? Uh, and obviously, if you do want them to join the attack, you can do that manually. So if you have this on stay back while attacking, you can still attack with your fullbacks. It just gives you a better defensive shape when you lose the ball because if these, if these fullbacks are going up the pitch... Uh, when you're attacking and you lose the ball, it's so easy to just play a ball down the line and you're in a lot of trouble, uh, especially if your defenders aren't the quickest. So by keeping these on stay back while attacking, it's very hard for your opponent to just counter attack you. And obviously, if you do want to attack with them, you can just make them join the attack by pressing L1 or something like that. So, you know, these are the instructions and tactics that I use for the 4-2-3-1. I find them to be very effective. You guys might not, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is what I use. Um, if you have enjoyed the video or found it informative, I would appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.